attention today. First of all, I'm going to speak more about the harm to social solidarity, why this is going to happen, why this is going to be major, why this is so important. Second of all, I'm going to talk to you about, about minorities within, within uh, combined cities and why they are going to suffer tremendously from this policy. Before that, a few points for about what we heard from the previous speaker. First of all, he told us that in integrated cities, people can influence through parliament. This may be true for a lot of compromises, not true for religious issues. Why is that? Because if you have a heretic, but an ultra-orthodox party that rules 55% of the majority in that city, Shabbat is not something they can compromise over. Religious commandments is not something they can compromise over. Therefore, no parliamentary, uh, no parliamentary solution is actually going to solve this. Second issue is he tells us, well, they just split municipality. Guess what? And I'll get to that extent in my point, but the ultra-orthodox community in Israel has a much higher birth of percentage, of a uh, uh, birth percentage, which means they're obviously going to move to the other part. Notice Bet Shemesh started out as a secular city with a small uh, ultra-orthodox city near to it. They basically split the municipality, then the municipality, one municipality spread it to the other. This doesn't solve the problem. Then they give us, the, they tell us, Solidarity won't be harmed that, uh, that severely and give us the example of Arab population in Israel. This is a terrible example to give for solidarity in Israel. Basically, what, and why is this so? You have the national conflict, that's one issue, but another issue, which is very, very important, is the issue that they live in different cities and cannot intermarry. If these two factors will apply with, the religious, with religious and secular people in Israel, you're going to get much more conflict, and I'll extend to that in my point. Then he talked, but about his main point, and here we believe Dan misses two, he has two uh, premises that we're going to dispute in our case, and they are the following. First of all, he, he assumes that these are actually separate communities and they don't affect each other. Notice, if I am a religious person paying taxes to the government, and the government operates public transportation on Shabbat, I am actively part of uh, I'm actively part of defiling my religion. This is a th that means that my freedom of religion extends beyond my own community that. to the entire nation. Now the second issue is that cities again are not in, uh, community uh, cities and municipalities do not actually reflect these homogenous communities that he wants, which I'll extend on my second point. Now going to first to social solidarity. Look. The different uh, areas in Israel are not actually separate. They pay taxes together. They mainly, the, se the secular uh, part of the population pays for a lot of things for the ultra-orthodox population. We, th we think that's critical. Second of all, we have the issue of common political interests. We have poor people in both in both communities. We think that the fact that Shas can cooperate with merit currently on uh, uh, Israeli left and Israeli ultra-orthodox uh, can <laughs> cooperate together on issues of social policy is something very, very important. It derives from the fact that he can both perceive of themselves as having some kind of unity. And we say that Shas does not cooperate with the Arab parties because so with them it does not have that shared ethos. And uh, so, no, please sit down. And the uh, third thing is, the, uh, is the issue of your willingness to sacrifice from yourself to the rest of society. The fact that we have conscription in Israel and the fact that people go and, uh, defend, to defend the entire society is something that's dependent highly on social solidarity. Now, especially if you're talking about the West Bank where a lot of the population is religious and uh, while being defended a lot by a lot, also a lot of secular soldiers from Tel Aviv. Now, why is solidarity being uh, harmed here? Yeah, first, uh, opening uh, government uh, opposition over to talk about how this is perceived as different. I don't feel myself Sir. belonging in the public space. But the, first of all, the, uh, the yeah. fact that people don't live together makes it much easier for extre for extreme positions about the other side. The fact that ma maybe I don't talk to Haredi people every day, but I see them on the street. I see uh, I see religious people, and re uh, there is the religious national par uh, part of the population that is a bridge in a way between Haredi and uh, uh, and uh, secular people, yeah. which is very very important. Now uh, this. Uh, when I don't see these people at all in my public sphere, this means less willingness to, uh, less willingness to engage, more fear of these people. Please sit down. So, uh, 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 and the more important issue is the issue of marriage. Because you, what they miss when they talk about different uh, spheres of marriage is that by religious standards, anyone who's married not in a religious framework is not uh, is considered a bad, uh, her children are considered a best. What does that tell us? That tells us that in, a, that in one generation, yeah. Religious and non-religious religious people will not be able to intermarry at all through the religious ceremonies. We think that's hugely influential because it means no integration between these populations. Now, what this, what this creates is a huge gap between these top populations. What does this lead to? First of all, it leads to less willingness by secular people to pay taxes to contribute.
Serbia. We see, uh, we, and we see that there is, a, there are ways of uh, um, avoiding this, avoiding conscription, and so on. And this will increase. Moreover, we see more political, uh, more political extremism on both sides. I mean, more, ch more, less chance for political alliance and more chances for. for uh, for parties that are more, that buy more into this ethos of they are different, they are fundamentally different, they are not like us, both on the heretic side and the secular side. More, uh, moreover, we say that we, it might, means much less willingness to accept government decisions when they apply to these issues, to issues like uh, like conscription of religious people, or like uh, evacuation of religious settlements. We think there is much more less willingness to, uh, to now uh, opt into these decisions. And it, uh, before I go on, and I'll take uh, obvious. Your own arguments show that there is still an interest for people to cooperate if it is indeed so bad as you say. It is the religion today that makes people feel that they are forced. It's what makes them not want to cooperate Thank and makes you. them fear of change. Thank you. We, we have disagree. Shot. We disagree. We believe that the main re uh, reason people will not want this is first of all, they want to know the other community. First, Second of all, they're going to feel that this other community is estranged from them and they will not have the connection through family ties, through marriage and so on. But more importantly, is the issue, the, is the issue of actually, uh, and this, as I said, ultra orthodox populations have a high birth rate. What does this tell us? That tells us that and they move to other cities, they move to new cities. And now every time a Haredi family starts moving in, for a Haredi community starts moving in to a secular neighborhood, this becomes a struggle for that city because they know that in a generation the city will become an orthodox city. And this means more uh, less chances of them uh, being accepted. Let, this becomes actually a struggle for dominance. Every uh, family making its own actions becomes a struggle for dominance. And about people moving, which is say the other Ridiculous. as well, but a lot of people are going to move around. People have people have houses that they own. It's not that easy to actually buy, a, get an apartment in a new place. Not that easy to leave the place you were born in. Not that it's a very, very serious damage. And for people who do stay in these neighborhoods, it's going to be a huge damage in, in the sense that they feel, for, uh, first of all, they're not being able to uh, to uh, live the life they want. It's much more than other status quo. And moreover, the uh, religious people feeling that they are actually being part of the sin through uh, through donating to these things. So because we create more harms to more people than the status quo. We impact harshly on social solidarity. We beg to oppose the motion. Thank you very much.